Hello, welcome back. It's the Clay Golem once again. We're back in Foundry VTT and we're looking at another add on in this video. Um, so, we're getting lots of suggestions from you guys in the comments about ways that we can improve the ways that we do things, um, things just make our life easier. And that's the whole point of this is being able to create a good experience for our players while not overburdening our DMs with all tons and tons of extra admin and things. Anything that enables us to focus on the fun and actually enjoying the game is a good thing while also enhancing as much as possible. So it's getting that balance, isn't it, between, you know, the the whizzy bits and the amount of energy we need to put into that. So I'm a big fan of getting everything prepared and putting time and effort into preparing for the game. So when you're actually sitting there in the game, you just get on and enjoy it, make it easy. Um, so one of these options that we have been given, something advised to take a look at, is um, the 5e stat block importer, um, which enables us to import monsters from uh, from any modules or anything we've got just by pasting their details in. Now this came out um, as a suggestion in one of the previous videos talking about the DDB, so the D&D Beyond Muncher, where we can pull down our characters and import them from D&D Beyond, and we can do that with items, and we can do that with spells, but you can only do that with monsters if you choose the Patreon option. Um, and while I don't have a problem with people doing that at all and supporting our mod developers, which is a good thing, not everybody's in a position to be able to do that. So if there's a free way to do it, I want to make sure we can show you so that you can make up your own mind. Um, I suspect that the DDB importer option is probably the easiest in a lot of ways. But in this one, we're going to be looking at, as I mentioned, the 5e stat block importer. So it's just at the top here. I can save that module. Um, it's already installed on this one. Uh, so here we are in our test world. Now just going up to my top right to my actors, we don't have any monsters built in the test world yet. We've been testing all sorts of bits, but not monsters. So what does this add-on actually do for us? Well, first of all, uh, something I haven't even done yet is... Uh, come on, brain. Uh, there is no... Oh, there's no options for it, which is fine. I was wondering if it had any options. There's no options for this one. That's fine. Not a problem. But on our Actors tab, on the right-hand side, go to our Actors. At the very bottom right corner there, in very small writing for you guys, it says Import Stat Block. And if I click on that, look, look, nice and straightforward, nice and simple. It says here, it's very dark. Uh, sorry, it's very sort of faded, so you might not be able to read it yourself. It says Usage. Paste the full stat block text into this box. It should follow Wizards of the Coast, so the WOTC, uh, formatting to be imported correctly. If you need to, you can edit the text here to fix any errors and then re-import. Uh, report any bugs using the, mo uh, the module link and add the stat block you were trying to import, which is fantastic. So, um, we've already, um, I've built a few things, but actually there's a few things that we could do here. So I'm going to pick something really simple. So I want to use our monsters from uh, our module. So just pulling over here. Now this is the red brand ruffian in the D&D Beyond digital version of Van Delver and below. Um, so I own this copy, so I am allowed to do stuff with it uh, and use it for my own purposes. Uh, I can literally copy, highlight that lot, uh, control C going to drag that out of your way. Uh, in this window, control V and dump that in. Now it doesn't look neat. It's got all these spaces and gaps in there. But if I just import, first of all, there is a folder here. So if I've got a group of folders for different types of monsters or monsters for different scenes and things like that, I can choose folder. Uh, I haven't got any folders in this one, so I'm not going to. Let's click import. <gasps> Oh, how exciting. So the first thing I noticed actually pop up on the right hand side. Yeah, I know the big thing in the middle of the screen. But the first thing I noticed was on the right hand side, we now have a new actor called Red Brand Ruffian has appeared there. And of course, we've got this character sheet. Let's close this in the background so we can focus on this. So um, what is it brought in for us? Well, we've got no image, which is fine. There isn't one for the module, um, but we can upload our own. Of course, we can just click on this, uh, select our token, etc. 
Uh, it's called it Red Brown Ruffian, that is correct. It's a medium build, typically neutral evil, humanoid. Uh, it's a CR, uh, just I'm checking in the module on the other page um, just to make sure that these things are correct. Yes, it is indeed a challenge rating of one half, 16 hit points, uh, an armor class of 11, um, it's move speed of 30, it's stats 14, 10, 12, 9, 9, 11. Um, intimidation, yep, it's got intimidation uh, skill there. Language is common, medium size. Um, yeah, that all looks perfect normal. Under features, what has it bought in? It's bought in its leather armor uh, and it's bought in its short sword, uh, which is good. Uh, and it shouldn't have any spells or effects or anything like that. So that's quite nifty. That seems to have worked perfectly. I mean, that's a really simple stat block, though. This is why I wanted to start with that one. <laughs> really simple. Um, but that's worked, doesn't it? That's brought in everything we needed, and it was really fast. We like fast. We like simple. I'm simple. I like <laughs> I like things like that. Okay, what do we do next? Now, uh, we were in the um, in our Fandelva campaign. We've just been uploading... Um, doing the um, Thunder Tree, the Ruins of Thunder Tree. And in that, we've got things like the Twig Blights. So uh, this is the Twig Blight. And again, just to show you, I literally have copied and pasted this directly. You can see where I've highlighted it directly from the module there. Uh, and again, I'm going to whack Import. And let's see how well it does with this one. Slightly more complicated. So it has indeed said that it's a small neutral evil plant. That's good. It's got the challenge rating is correct, which is great. Again, it has updated the stats correctly. Some of these things, so blind sight, brilliant. It has picked up that it should have blind sight. It's picked up that it is small, um, understands common but doesn't speak. That's nice. It has just, it's actually picked that up properly rather than just saying it can speak common vulnerable to fire and immune to blinded and deafened. Those are all absolutely correct, which is good, and it's stealth things. That's worked perfectly so far. Um, it's features, uh, false appearance is brought in, now it's brought in claws. I want to check this to make sure this damage is correctly. Uh, and you can see this description, melee weapon attack, plus three to hit, reached, etc., etc. That's all fine, um, and we don't need any of those other bits. Uh, details here it's uh, natural okay which is fine and it's a melee attack just at the bottom here it's talking about being melee attack it's one action uh, and the damage is d4 plus one piercing perfect perfect twig blight it's brought in absolutely perfectly and of course i can go in here and can't remember where i where i put my uh i had one didn't i where did, I, where did I upload my twig blights to? <laughs> um, anyway, whatever it was, uh, and I can just update my images and things like that straight away. So this looks like a really, 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 really quick and easy way to do it. Okay, so that's slightly more complicated and that's worked really nicely. Uh, there is also the larger version of those, which is the needle blight. So let's bring in a needle blight. I'm not going to bother showing you the other screen. Literally, copy and paste. Um, now, that's brought in Twig Blight again. It, that's probably because I I failed to copy, didn't I? <laughs> uh, these modules are often far more reliable than I am. <laughs> right, copy, paste. Just check. Yeah, Needle Blight, it says it at the top. Right. Okay, import. Brilliant. <laughs> We've now got our Needle Blight. <laughs> Oh, so challenged. Okay, so again, yeah, we've got the more hit points. We've got our blind sight, the understanding common. Not vulnerable to fire, weirdly enough. Um, immunity to blind and deafened. It's updated our stats, our features, our claws, and the needles attack, which is essentially the range attack. So we can just check that. It's a natural weapon. It's a range attack with 30, 60 feet range, doing D 2d6 plus modifier yes that's correct so brilliant it's brought that one in as well that's really nice right i'm going to look in the um i'm looking in the i can bring it over we can we can look together can't we so this is the beastery for the fandelver and below the hidden obelisk and it's got basically a whole bunch of new monsters in it 
So like this zealot, um, these ashen whites and things. And these are a bit different, um, as in they're a lot more detailed um, and they're things that you might necessar not necessarily encountered before. Um, let's go with the top one. Let's try this. So I'm just selecting the whole lot. Uh, control C. Chuck it out of the way. Back to our importer. And then pasting that in. Now this is a big one. It's got some new things in it. Just check it's pasted the right thing. Let's import and let's have a let's have a look. Okay, let's get rid of that in the background. All right, so this should be a medium aberration, which it is. It's supposed to be a CR8, uh, which it is at the top right there. Uh, 15, 18, 12, 13, 8, 19. So it's brought all of those in correctly. Um, armor class of 16, 93 hit points. That's all correct. Movement speed of 30. Lovely. Uh, we've got skills in perception. Very nice indeed. Uh, that's all correct. Immune to blinded, charmed, frightened, grappled, and restrained. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, damage resistance to psychic. That's very unusual, isn't it? Mm, okay, but that is correct. Language is common and deep speech. So it just says deep, fine. Uh, and it has dark vision and true sight. Is that correct? Uh, dark vision, 60 foot, true sight to 10 foot. Yes, I know that's really small for you guys to read, but that does say true sight, 10 feet there, dark vision, 60 feet. All of those are brought in. Right, what about these features then? Psychic rend. Uh, so that's a melee or ranged attack. Have a quick butchers at that. Brought in the description. Um, 3d6 damage. Yep, that's correct with a range of 120. Yep, that's all. It's good. It's really good. Um, armor class... So equipment wise, has it got uh, studded leather armor? Yep, it's brought that in. Um, abhorrent, um, aberrant form, so it's brought that in as well. Okay, so I've just checked the details of that. It's a monster feature. Okay, so we've got that. Weirdly pliable. Now that's a, f <laughs> that's a feature in it. <laughs> it's, it sounds like an insult, but it could also be a compliment. <laughs> You know that guy over there? He's weirdly pliable. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Uh, it's boring and multi attack. We've got our um, psychic rend we already mentioned. Um, and a short sword attack. Um, void warp. Yes, we've got that with its charges, which is good. Uh, the void... Right, right, what's this? The void then disappears. Right, that looks like there might be an issue there. Um, duh, 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 duh. Is that good? Let me just drag this over. So I'm reading this bit. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Immediately after a teleport screen, duh, 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 duh. the void then disappears. So it looks like it's picked that bit up as a separate power. So let me have a look at the the uh, this one. The void then disappears. Okay, so it's got it in there. And then for some reason it's got this one as a bonus action thing here. So it just looks like it's brought this in accidentally as an extra one. And to be honest, I'm not surprised. I chose a complex one to deliberately to stress test it. And if that's the biggest problem it's got, is it's accidentally done that. There we go, problem solved. Again, this is a huge time saver from creating our own creatures when we've already got a stat block for them. Um, and as long as you can copy and paste it in, and realistically, you could type it directly in if you needed to. If you only had a, if you've got an old module sitting around, you've only got a paper copy of it, um, rather than scanning it in things, you can literally just follow the normal stat block rules, type it up, chuck it in there, away you go. Um, so it's got spellcasting psionics, um, and that talks about things it can do. So let's check his spell book. Ha ha, right. Okay, so this says, um, at will, detect thoughts, minor illusion once per day, uh, arcane gate, hunger of Hadar. Um, no, no effects, no biography, nothing in the spell book. Okay, so there is a little bit of working to be done on this one around its, um, its spells. 
it hasn't worked perfectly. Now, bearing in mind, bearing in mind, if we go back to the importer, and this says about following that thing, and it says about, you know, you may need to do a little bit of editing just to get this to, um, to work perfectly well. So this is the bit where it's not quite doing this the way we want to and it may be that we can just edit the stat block to get that pull through correctly and we just re-upload it um where did it go did i not save it no it's up the top here he is um yeah so it might just be that we need to just edit it slightly so that uh, we know that it will pull up these properly but still you may add them yeah no spell casting levels and i wonder if that's the reason hmm That might be the reason to do with no spell casting levels, but we can still add the spells in if we want to. All right, so is it perfect? No. Is it really, really good time saver? Yes, it is. So the only word of advice would be absolutely use this, pull it in, save yourself tons of time. Just check them. Just check they're correct before you go running off too far. Don't. I mean, you should do that anyway, of course. You know, slap it down, start playing a game, and realize your big bad, you know, you, you know your big bad guy. Um, he's missing half of his abilities <laughs> or he's doing something ridiculous with his damage that he shouldn't be doing so just check it but again I really like that one so 5e stat block importer I will be using that on our or uh, what is currently called our Stormwreck Isle uh, game which is where we're doing Fandelver and Blow I will be importing that and I will be using it on there so it's another really really good one really appreciate um, wh whoever it was apologies I don't always remember who said what um, but yeah, really good suggestion. Love it. Take care, guys. Bye.